What we are looking at today will invariably end in disaster. The most important indicators have proven that an unsustainable path has been formed and there's no turning back. There is no soft landing. There is no way to cover up a problem of massive debt on all levels by adding much more debt. It's a mathematical certainty and it's the central banks that are to blame. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at a bubble that has grown bigger than what we saw in 2008. Eight. While the subprime itself might not be bigger, we see today that there are ever more derivatives being created, all new schemes that have been conjured up by these mad scientists. You're looking at a problem that will invariably create a disaster. We don't need to be geniuses and have a crystal ball and be a soothsayer to figure it all out. We simply need to understand the way derivatives work. They're worse today than they were back then. You can total them up and say, well, not exactly, but it doesn't mean the larger, the worse it is. That's not how it works. Right now, today, we are more intertwined, more connected, and more reliant on the financial system than we were a decade ago. Go. This is going to create a problem that will be felt all across the world. It doesn't matter which country falls. One domino falls, the rest will follow. National price map. You are looking here at Canada. I wanted to do a comparison of this first. This is from the CREA website, which you can look up. Now, comparing Greater Toronto to Greater Vancouver, this just shows you in Toronto, prices have increased year over year from April of 2018 to 2019, 3.2% as opposed to Greater Vancouver, which has actually declined minus 8.5%. You're seeing that. And just wanted to show you this as opposed to an area like Montreal, for instance, you could see the prices are at 360,000 as of 2019. Prices have risen 6.4%. So this area here has seen a continuous increase. However, the prices are significantly lower than what we are seeing in many other areas. That is a very, very different situation than a place like Vancouver, that's for sure. So the prices are highly dependent on where you live. You cannot look at a Canadian average. You not look at a US average to be able to determine the prices, for instance, let's say in Manhattan, San Francisco, and then somewhere in the middle of the United States. These are very different, and I like to take it even by state or by province is too broad, too general. So I like to go in at least to the city level because even at that level, there are very big variances that are often within particular cities. This is out of the Globe and Mail. While some agents have moved away from holding offer nights, especially above the 1 million mark, this particular agent says she usually advises the sellers to list their properties with a low asking price and a scheduled offer date in an effort to spur competition. Listing the condo for $599, hoping to get over $700. You have to think about what's going on here. They're purposely creating price wars. They're purposely creating the mentality of people that there's only a limited amount of houses out there and they should fight for that last one. This works time and time again, okay? We watch this happening, not in some areas, because some areas that have maybe too much inventory or simply not enough buyers, it all depends. This doesn't work in those cases, but in the hot markets, it actually does and usually boosts the price up further than what they were ever hoping for because the psychology of individuals will always take over. They think it's like a TV show where they have to fight for that one home. There's only three to choose from. We have to pick one and we have to pick it right now before the end of that 30 minute episode. This is really what has happened over the years. And unfortunately, this has created that euphoria somewhat with all the other factors here, the very low interest rates and so on. Canadian home prices were unchanged in April, failing to rise for the eighth consecutive month. Now, this happens to be the Canadian average, as I said. Not something that I'd like to focus on, but just interesting to see that information. It was just the second time in 21 years of data that the index showed no increase in April. Usually at this time, it's spring, things are coming online, people are starting to buy houses, the market's ready for this. But unfortunately, this time around didn't happen. 
happen. The last time it did, this was April 2009, and of course the housing crisis wasn't as if the same situation that the US had happened in Canada, okay, that didn't occur, but there was a slowdown that was present, and then of course it rocketed higher afterwards. This is now the second time. So we're at the same level of these prices today where they become weaker, where they become stagnant, and the inventory builds up. This is the most important indicator when you look at real estate. If you want to know, is a house overvalued? Are prices too expensive today? The ratio of housing prices to local earnings in Greater Toronto is a grim 8 to 1, but it's in a dire 12 to 1 in Metro Vancouver. The one standard ratio that marked housing considered affordable used to be about 4 to 1. In my book, I believe I said 3 or 4 to 1. Doesn't matter. Let's with four, you don't often find that in many cities around the world. If you look at the same thing, San Francisco, Manhattan, even Miami, other places, it does not look anywhere near these numbers. But it's the most important factor. How can people buy houses if they can't afford it? You have to think about this for a second. How the hell is somebody going to buy a house if they literally cannot buy it? That doesn't make any sense, but that's what's happening today. And people do so using the maximum amount of debt. They buy with the littlest portion down, not because they want to keep their money in their stock portfolio, not because they've got it invested elsewhere, but because they don't have the money. Money. But this allows them to enrich the banks. That's what occurs. Paying it over a 30 year period is wonderful for these banks. They love it. They love every minute of it. Now you're comparing the prices in Vancouver, just showing you what has occurred. Prices have definitely fallen from their peak, but over the years they have risen considerably. You can see the detached homes really taking a beating and quite volatile to say the least. Now we're looking at Australia. This is one country that has suffered considerably. Sydney Sydney's top 50 most vulnerable property markets. They gave some details in here, and I'm not going to read you the whole thing because you're going to fall asleep. I'll show you the list in just a second. But CoreLogic has the data in here. I mean, you're seeing certain areas that are falling by 25%, 21%. There are places around that have really, really suffered as a result of the excessive growth that has come up. If it never went this fast, you would have had a slow and steady rise but people want to see that they want to see cycles they want to see damage they want to see this go extremely high extremely low and people hurt along the way no we should have a slow and steady rise over generations and that wouldn't be a problem but today we have nothing but problems because of what the central banks have done to this system they have made these easy monetary policies and they have created the chaos which we see in the financial markets of the 50 suburbs, 44 had value losses greater than 10% and 11 had property value losses greater than 15%. This is quite significant in this country here that has been seeing such a meltdown in their real estate. Liverpool happens to be on the top of the list here, losing 25%. And that's just one place. I mean, you could look around there even showing you Bondi Beach, which is down 19%. Obviously, the prices are extremely high to begin with, but when you see them coming down 20%, that is extremely, extremely negative. So you can pause the video here or I will have a link in the description. Here are the rest in the list that you can maybe see if you're interested in any of these places in Australia. I want to take a look at that. Now this is talking about a particular house that was selling for way under the market, but I wanted to show you this because of the first line. Sydney's median house price might be coming back down towards the million dollar mark for the first time in four years, but it's still a far cry from what most hopeful first home buyers can afford. That's what is very unusual historically, that people can't actually afford homes. This is not normal when you think about it, that people today, they need to live somewhere, they need to eat 
heat and maybe they need heat in the winter and clothing on their back. The simple things in life. Yet we have all of these assets like real estate that have come up excessively and people are burdened so much by the debt that it's impossible to ever pay back. I don't think they realize it because they are enticed by their salesmen, by their real estate agents, by the mortgage brokers and so on. Don't worry, you can afford it. We'll just fudge the numbers a little bit and you're all good. This map shows how how much money a family of four needs to earn to get by in every US state. So you're comparing here obviously certain areas are more expensive than others but I just wanted to show you this I thought it was very relevant and you're looking here at the living wage US dollar terms $80,000 and up are the dark regions which looks to me like California New York and then you go with the west coast uh, above that obviously also very very expensive then you take a look at Florida Florida, also relatively expensive and other places around. Just wanted to show you this. You've seen the data before, but this is interesting. This map shows the minimum amount necessary to meet basic needs for a family of four without relying on outside help, including factors such as housing, food, childcare, and health insurance. Housing is simply too expensive today, and when it comes back down to reality, it may be a great purchase. There are places around the United States where homes are much more affordable than others. Same goes for Australia, same goes for Canada and other places. However, at these prices here, it is going to end in a very big dramatic decline simply because people can't afford it. That's all. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a like on this video, you're supporting, supporting me in this channel and supporting the truth. So take a look at these two. I got real estate information in both of these jam-packed yet they're simple and easy to read. So check them out at the link in the description if you want the audiobook that's available at themoneygps.com. If you want to find out about the global economic slowdown, the millions of cars that are sitting unsold in lots, the fact that millions of people haven't paid their car loans and so much more, you got to watch this video, click on it, and I will see you there.